Hey guys, welcome back. My wife's Honda Pilot recently ticked over 70,000 miles. And like clockwork, around every 15,000 miles or so, I need to change the transmission fluid in this vehicle. This Honda Pilot is a 2019 all-wheel drive EXL with the six-speed transmission. I've had a lot of gripes about this Honda Pilot over the last several years, but there are three complaints that really annoy me. Number one is this infotainment system with its most MOST wiring system is just a pain. The thing barely works. It has all kinds of issues and Honda more or less has given up on fixing this problem. And the second big problem, which I made a video about a few months ago is that Honda put a timing belt in this engine design and timing belts need to be changed every 100,000 miles or so. And as this thing nears 100,000 miles, it's time for me to start thinking about whether I wanna pay a mechanic $2,000 to do it or do it myself and spend a weekend messing around under the hood. Which brings me to my third complaint about the Honda Pilot, which is almost mind boggling. This thing needs a transmission fluid change just about every 15,000 miles. And it takes just over three quarts. So to get the job done, you'll need at least four quarts and you can possibly save some of that fourth quart for subsequent oil changes. You see, when we first got this Honda Pilot, I didn't realize how many oil changes this thing would require. So at around 29,000 miles, it started to shudder or judder going down the highway. And the symptom of that is the torque converter locking up and unlocking rapidly, causing the vehicle to feel like it's vibrating. Well, it turns out that the transmission has such tight tolerances that as soon as that transmission fluid starts to deteriorate just a little bit, it's basically time to replace it. So to avoid those problems, you're gonna to wanna to keep a very clean transmission fluid in your vehicle. Further compounding my aggravation with this transmission is even though the job is easier than a basic oil change if you go to a dealership to get the job done they're going to try to charge you two or three hundred dollars for what is essentially a drain and fill so to change those 3.1 quarts of fluid two hundred dollars plus about ten dollars a quart they're charging you 170 dollars to open a bolt drain the fluid close the bolt and top it back off. And I understand the shops have got to keep their lights on, but that's essentially a 15 minute transmission fluid change, which is even faster than a 20 minute oil change. And this is not a gripe about our, how our mechanics do their jobs or the service that they provide. It's a gripe about how the dealerships underwrite this labor. This simple job that is absolutely required to maintain this vehicle should not cost that much. So I'm going to go ahead and pull my Honda Pilot in and get the transmission fluid changed so that I can guarantee that I'll have another 15 to 30,000 miles of reliable use out of this transmission. And please don't mind the mess. It's almost impossible to keep up with these bugs. And just in case some knucklehead tries to move the vehicle while I'm under there, I'll go ahead and sit the emergency brake. One thing I can at least appreciate about the Honda Pilot, at least this model, is that it does have a dipstick. The dipstick is a little hard to reach and it's right by the exhaust manifold, but I really don't even need to check it right now because I'm gonna drain it. So I'll go ahead and drain it and then I'll check it when I top it off later. A benefit to checking it now would be that I would know if the transmission's leaking, but I already know that this one's not leaking because I keep a pretty close eye on it as is. This job is super simple. I have four quarts of brand new ATF DW1, Honda branded automatic transmission fluid. I also have a 3 8 inch ratchet with just a short extension so that I can get into the side of the transmission. And then finally, I don't wanna make a huge mess, so I have my oil drain pan ready to go. Which reminds me why Honda usually tries to charge you so much for this labor. There is a fill plug under the air box, and so if you do this job according to the book, you have to remove that air box fill the transmission, and then reinstall the air box. But what I do is I refill the transmission through the dipstick. The dipstick access goes straight into the reservoir of the transmission, and so there's no need to remove that air box. But to get the fluid in the transmission, I do need this ultra-long black 
super funnel transmission funnel and this thing is the perfect size to fit in the dipstick tube and so i can just snake that down in plug it in and top off my transmission no problem and the last thing i need which of course i bought a bag of but can't seem to locate right now is the little crush washer that goes on the drain plug i'm going to go ahead and risk it and reuse my old crush washer i normally change those every time and my bag of 20 cost me about 10 bucks on amazon So on this level surface, the pilot is just high enough that I can squirm under here without needing a creeper or without having to raise the vehicle. But one thing I strongly recommend is use something like this moving blanket. That way you can lay down and have a nice soft surface to work on. But of course, since I have jack stands and I need room to set up my camera so you guys can see what I'm doing, I'm gonna go ahead and roll my vehicle onto a jack stands. And of course I did reset my e-brake before I'm getting back under the vehicle again. So draining the transmission is very easy. I've got the exhaust pipe running off on the top of the screen here. And then this little 3 8 inch female socket bolt is the drain plug. And so to get this drained, I'm using this short extension just so I can get it in there. And it gives me just a little bit of play that I need so that I'm not banging my ratchet against the transmission itself. A regular two to four inch extension will also work, but you don't have room for a six inch extension. The six inch extension will probably put you into the oxygen sensor here. Another thing you wanna do before you get started is just make sure you're on lefty loosey, not righty tighty. Sometimes when I get upside down under these vehicles, I can get a little disoriented. And if you don't check that, you might be tightening the bolt when you think that you are actually loosening it and that'll cause you to strip this aluminum casing which is a huge no-go so that thing popped too easy before i go any further i do want to pull some of this excess moving blanket out of the way that way if i spill anything it goes on the ground it's much easier to clean up I want to angle it so that I more or less have the longest portion of the stream go to the far point of the drain pan. And then when it finally starts to drip, it just drips into the edge of the drain pan over here. Let's see what we got. Just a little splash, not too bad. We're sitting at 72,000 miles and there's some clutch material all around the edge of this magnetic end on this drain plug. I don't know if that's a significant amount relative to the life of the transmission or if that's just a normal amount. Either way, I don't like to see that, but it is what it is. And as you can see, I don't know if you can tell in the video here, but the fluid doesn't look extremely dark. It actually still looks a little red. Either way, I feel like this fluid is very touchy when it comes to any impurities. So that's why I'm gonna continue to change it every 15,000 miles. So I wanted to get a little more light on that and just highlight how dirty that drain plug is. So this Honda Pilot actually holds over eight quarts of fluid. But when I do this drain and fill, I'm only draining what's in the reservoir or where an old transmission pan used to be. So if I really wanted to get completely new fluid or as close to new fluid as possible, so according to like the way the math works out, three drain and fills will get you 97% new fluid and a fourth one would get you like 99%. You're never gonna get 100% new fluid unless you completely rebuild from scratch and put completely new fluid in there. And although I'm gonna reuse this crush washer, I am gonna flip it over. And the reason I'm gonna do that is it's already been crushed in on the other side to mate with the hole of the transmission. So now it's got a flat surface. So when I torque it down, it will reseat this crush washer and put just a little ring around it 
to mate to the surface of the transmission. While this drains for the next few minutes, I'm gonna try to locate my torque wrench. So I managed to find this uh, torque wrench. This is my half inch drive, so it's a little bigger than I like to use for this, but it'll do the job of getting me that 29 pound feet of torque that I need to secure that drain plug into the transmission. I think I'm happy with that amount of fluid coming out. I've got this in. Let me just wipe some of these drips off. I'll wipe it again once I torque it down, but later once I get it warmed up, I can check and see if it's leaking at all. And before I do that, let's see. Good, righty tighty. And this is 29 pound feet of torque or foot pounds of torque. It's not a whole lot. So if I just had a ratchet, I would just hand tighten that just about where I'm at right now and give it just a little more of a turn. I just felt the crush washer crush a little bit. There we go. Torqued. Now I never double tap it. Once you get that tap on the torque wrench, you are set. If you double tap it, you're adding additional torque to it, completely unnecessary. Sometimes I see folks do that and yes, it'll get it a little tighter, but you are gonna bust your torque limit. I'm gonna clean this off nice, let's see. Got a little bit of a weeping drip coming out, but I want that nice and clean so when I check it after it's full and hot, I'll know if it's leaking or not. I don't suspect it will leak. I did feel the crush washer crush just a little bit, so that's perfect. Let's get some fluid inside of the vehicle. This is going to be the hardest part of today's job and mainly because I don't want to get super dirty. My dipstick is right down here and I just pull that right out. I can see from where the fluid was on it, the fluid was just a little brown. That hole for that fill tube is this thick. So the diameter of that is this thick, which is just thicker than the diameter of my funnel here. It does take a little bit of work. A flashlight will help you a lot as far as seeing where the hole is. And then also because I'm up on the jack stands right now, a stool will help a lot as well. So I've got that thing seated. Let's check it out. Uh, you can't see it down in there, but it certainly is seated in there. And and this is something you'll be able to see with your own eyes when you're doing this job. Not super complicated. Most folks know this, but when you fill a vehicle with oil or transmission fluid, the, the long side of the bottle goes up when you're pouring in this manner so that I don't break the tipping point until I get to where I want to be. So for this one, straight in, no problem. And because of the dimensions of that funnel, I can just drop that straight in there and let that drain. So because this takes just a little over three quarts, I'm gonna drop the three quarts in. And then once I get those three quarts in, I'm gonna take it off of the jack stands and then I'll check it level once the transmission's hot. Before you dump your fluid like this, do double check to make sure that that funnel is seated properly in your dipstick tube. Otherwise you're gonna get fluid all over the floor and you don't wanna do that. The carpenter is gonna tell you to do the same thing, you know, measure twice, cut once, in this case, I double checked my capacity and, but now that I'm double checking it, I'm looking at 3.5 US quarts. So luckily I didn't start this with just a little over three quarts or I'd be low. Nonetheless, now that I've got three quarts in, I'm gonna go ahead and back this thing off of the jack stands and put that last half quart in. So I've got just about a half a quart remaining. I'll set this off to the side in case I need it for another change, but that pretty much completes this job. And as always, before you complete any job, double check to make sure you have everything you need out of there. 
And while I'm here, I might as well go ahead and check the level on the dipstick. We're not at the operating temperature, but I should have an idea of how much fluid I have in there. And I wanted to point out one more thing. This dipstick has a little notch on it right here. That notch must lock in for you to get a proper reading. It says it's a little on the low side, so I'm gonna go drive around a little bit and then I'll double check it. The vehicle's out of the way, so this is a perfect opportunity to clean up my mess. Okay guys, as much as I complained about how often I have to change that transmission fluid in that vehicle, it's not that hard and I actually enjoy doing that kind of stuff. So if you enjoyed my video, give it a thumbs up, say hi in the comments, and I'll see you in my next adventure.